and welcome to the Mission TV show. Before we start our show today, I'd like to share with you a special verse that's been very, very pertinent in the lives of the people we're going to speak with today. It's Philippians 4.19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I have with me today Jeff and Fauna Sutton. Jeff and Fauna, welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for joining us today. We had the it's children on set earlier, so yeah. we have a picture of your family we okay. can insert, but the children, their patience is tried by a half hour show, so we, <laughs> yeah. we decided to let them, let them be free today. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't get a lot of talking in edgewise, I don't think. Yeah, we'd have airplanes on the show, I think, Bill. <laughs> anyway, um, before we move too far you know, into what's going on now, how did you start in missions? I know it's always a long story how the Lord has led, but if you can encapsulate it somehow for us, how you... You know, oh, where, yeah. where you were led yeah. into missions or how the Lord led. Well, yeah, you're right. It is always a long story. Um, and I guess probably to make it brief, we got, we got started with Gospel Ministries um, at, at Southern, when we went to Southern. And I did. And I went as a student missionary and I worked with them. Um, Fauna, where did you get? I went to India as a student missionary with Outpost Centers in International. International. Yeah, I'm also incorporated. <laughs> Okay. and uh, worked over there. I was supposed to go do health evangelism and it ended up that September 11 happened four days after I got there and I ended up working in an orphanage teaching first grade for 10 months. Okay, so. but now you're a pilot and you're a nurse and mm -hmm. what are your, what all of your, are your qualifications supposedly or your skills oh. that the Lord has, yeah, we, has given you? I guess a lot of everything. I think just, uh, you know, we end up, I end up doing a lot of uh, mechanics and construction and I fly and that's what I love about mission work every day you can put on a different hat and, <laughs> yeah, it's a variety. Know, yeah a big variety of stuff sometimes uh, have to, I, I think I've had a chance to play doctor a couple times so you know there's lots of uh, you know things you get to do um, I think uh, in, in my experience it's been a lot of the practical skills that I've learned uh, from I, I grew up in a, in a family that did a lot of those kind of things as far as uh, and the practical line of work, just mechanics and building and stuff like that. So I learned that from being a kid, as a kid, and then I got into aviation. And in fact, I graduated from Southern from theology. So I do a little bit of, uh, you know, course of evangelism, and, and that is the, the reason for all of it. Right, right. So the other skills are just as part of the work of doing the evangelism. Yep. Okay, so did you grow up with the longing in your heart to be a missionary, or how did that come about, that willingness to go... Uh, I really didn't. I did uh, as a kid, and then as a teenager, I kind of got waylaid in um, probably maybe more like pew warming and uh, people gazing at the church, you know. So you watch, well, you know, so and so's like this, and such and such is like that. Well, I don't want anything to do with it. So I really wasn't interested in in church so much as a teenager, um, early teenager, and then um, yeah, that's kind of a long story of how how God really worked out that miracle but I'll tell you what he'll use anything uh, to, to chase us down and and uh, I actually got back into church uh, in emissions and evangelism um, through uh, a let's see a youth rally and uh, and then some you know attractive young call porter leader inviting me to call porter and anyway <laughs> I was not that. that was, it wasn't, she wasn't that, but uh, anyway. But you, yeah, it I ended was up, an opportunity to Yeah, I ended see. up call portering just to go hang out with this person, and then, uh, and then I got thrown out call portering, which I didn't really plan on doing, you know, and, and then to see the need out there, and that really changed uh, perspective for me, and I, took, I had several opportunities to do Bible work and call portering, and I kind of changed the crowd instead of being with the... Uh, I don't know, the rollerblader, skateboarder, skier, snowboarder crowd to Bible workers and coal porters, kind of a different crowd. So you, you know? started to see a purpose for living. Absolutely. Instead of just hanging out. Absolutely, yeah. All right, what about you, Fauna? Did you grow up wanting to be a missionary? My parents read mission stories to us a lot, and some of our favorite people that we hung out with were Pastor Lantry and his wife. He's written many books, and... My parents read their books to us a lot, and they would tell us stories, and that always put a desire in my heart to go out and work overseas. And so I told God, I said, I want to work overseas, and I want to be a nurse. 
And I have done some nursing, but in the long run, I'm a mom. And we have three children, and God has blessed me with that. And the opportunities to share what having Christ in your home can do has been a big ministry for me, for sure. Yeah, we found that the family, actually having the children there, opened doors it does. to oh, that mm-hmm. just an adult couldn't open. Oh, mm-hmm. absolutely. And, and, and she says she's just a mom, but she just. ends up... Yeah, well... And that's a, that's a huge undertaking in itself. But then on top of that, you know, the people that you, um, you know, I remember one particular year we had a hotel. And I think we counted back for the time that we were in that house. I say a hotel. It was in our apartment. But we had, I think we had four nights of just us in, our, in that house. So, wow. you know, she has the gift of hospitality. She reaches out to people. And, you know, they, they, they tell me. Uh, more of how Fauna's touched their lives, you know, and hey, Jeff's off running off doing something, flying something, fixing something, and Fauna's listening to their needs and, and uh, caring for them. And uh, that's been a really so. important, she, it's a huge blessing uh, in, our, in our marriage and, and ministry for sure. So God has specific, specific, specific skills for each of you. Absolutely. But they blend together and they mm. work together because, you know, ultimately... If you're, if you're flying to pick someone up that needs medical attention or something, I mean, she can't give the medical attention until you bring the person to her. And so, you know, it's got mm-hmm. to gotta work together. Yeah, absolutely. That's really neat. So where did you get together in missions? I mean, how did, how did your coming together to go as missionaries full time? Well, I think, um, you know, we, we uh, I won't go into our whole how we got together and, you know, because that's a whole nother long story as far as our, <laughs> our relationship. But right. uh, once, once we actually, uh, as when we got married, we had, we had talked about um, wanting to serve in overseas missions. And I had, uh, I was just finishing theology. She had finished nursing. And so, um, let's see. She was, I guess I had just taken an interview jo- uh, a call to do um, assistant youth director for the Arizona Conference, but we said we only want to do it for a year, and then David called us and asked us to start an aviation program in Bolivia. Okay. And uh, we called back the Arizona Conference and said, well, this is our mission opportunity. We're going to take it now. And uh, there's a lot of guys here that are graduating, wanting to go as, you know, get a job and, and have a call. And stay here. Yeah, yeah, and stay here. So I said, that's no problem. Uh, but I, I want to go overseas. So, they, you know, that worked out. And um, I guess that was, that was in, uh, oh, I don't remember what year that was. 2004. Oh, yeah, so just about a year after being married, we uh, headed down and to start an aviation program with, no airplanes, and uh, it was <laughs> it was starting from nothing, you know. I think and you've got a picture for us of yeah. you showing us your first house. Yeah, and a few of the- yeah, this is our first house. <laughs> you know, we started out um, uh, just just us, and everybody wondered, well, how are you going to survive, and how are you going to, you know, every told I was irresponsible, and, oh, and yes. all these things, you know, the different things that people tell you. The devil uses to discourage you, but I, you know, I said, well, God can provide for our needs, and and then what if you have a family and all these things? And Well, anyway, that's how we started. We started in that little hut, and it turns out there was no airplanes. And, and uh, we, we started with the aviation program. It was a little bit slow going, but we started helping out at this school in, in the bush in northern Bolivia. And that was our, f- our first uh, home. Uh, that was the start of it. We actually extended onto that. And, yeah, it looks and, kind of... Kind of narrow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. About that square, maybe. Yeah. Uh huh. That's a, That's about how it is. That that width by that length. So. Okay. Um, yeah, we were we were there, and uh, you know, <laughs> as we got there, we realized the need for aviation. Uh, this this is a picture. It's kind of blurry because we're riding down a bus. This is about an a 24 hour bus, 18 to 24 hour bus ride, depending on how okay. the. I mean, this is the second most dangerous road in the world. Okay. And I don't know if you can tell it's why. A, yeah, that's a yeah. fairly, <laughs> fairly big cliff. In fact, the drivers here, you drive, uh, they normally in Bolivia, they drive like on the same side we do in the States, but on this particular road, they switch it so that the driver is sitting on the same edge as the cliff. Okay. And uh, Then he can see where he's going better. In, the, in this particular picture, if I looked straight down, I could look right past that wheel and straight down, you know, 150 feet. It was no guardrails, no nothing. And, uh, and it's and narrow. It's, it's very not narrow. It's a wide road. And, and, and uh, what's amazing about this, and I turn over to that guy, and I'm like, man, that guy's right on the edge. Oh, he says, oh, that's nothing. 
You know, that sometimes they'll fly the first, you know, how they have the set of two wheels in the back. They'll fly the first one, he says. It'll go over the edge, and you're only sitting on one. I thought, <sighs> and I'm looking down there, and I see a lot of uh, scrap metal down at the bottom. I thought, wow, well... Anyway, that, that's one that's in the Andes Mountains getting to the flatlands. And then once you get out of the mountains and you get to the flatlands, you get to a, uh, the mud pits. Bit I of mean. a bog. Uh-huh. And I learned about th this whole scenario. that You can see a truck over there um, that's full of women. And I realized if you take <laughs> a bus, make sure there's a lot of men on your bus. So anyway, you know, you want, you want men on the bus. Those are, when they pull, they have that rope there, and they pull, and everybody pushes. That's your, uh, I don't know, your winch. It's a human <laughs> winch. And uh, anyway, it can take weeks in rainy season to get around. So um, between uh, that and directing the, anyway, after that, I began to direct that. No, let me say that again. The, uh, uh, I was directing that high school, and... Um, simultaneously working with the aviation program at the same time. There was nobody there that uh, uh, the, di the director had left. David asked me to direct it. I thought he had the wrong guy. I got, you know, because I, I wasn't much into school. I'm not a big school guy. And, and uh, when I was, I went to a day academy and it was kind of sketchy. I felt bad for my teachers. And anyway, I, I, I had to leave. After being the director of a, of a school, now you know how bad you really oh. were, huh? <laughs> Well, you know, that's true. And, and what was fun, I, it turned out I thought I wouldn't like it, but then, you know, I didn't have a problem with all those rascals. I knew every trick in the book. So they didn't, they <laughs> didn't scare the me. Guy after yeah. all then, huh? <laughs> it worked out all right. And in fact, I really turned out to love it. Um, we, had, we started out with about 25 students there. Now it's up to close to 70. And... Uh, Anyway, it's an amazing evangelistic tool. I realized, man, how effective you can reach and share Christ with those young people and turn them into missionaries because we need to generate those missionaries. Aviation is just a tool to get people places. places. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it opens up the, the work in the, you know, with the medical evangelism. You're, you're opening the hearts of the people so that you can bring the gospel in and then you can take a gospel worker there. But that's the hard part is finding those people that'll... Yeah, yes. absolutely. So... Um, here's another picture of uh, this school oh, here. Mud. Yeah, <laughs> we've got this uh, a dump truck. This is when we were building the road in the school, and that's a whole another long story uh, of the miracles God did there. I didn't know you can't build roads during rainy season, and that's kind of why, because yeah, it's kind of muddy. Yeah, and that wow. that was that was. But we did. Is this stuck also? No, is this there? guy he's almost stuck. I was really worried about when I was looking at that picture. I thought I hope they don't get him stuck because. Then when he gets stuck, it's, it, the, you know, that you're, little you're human winch is going to be really tough to pull him out. So <laughs> anyway, and I think there's a picture of one of our planes that we had there. We started out with one, and now we have uh, four and then uh, in Bolivia. So okay. and we're working on We've got new pilots down there. They're, they're other, I hardly fly anymore. I do more. Uh, well, it, it's funny how God sends you to do things you wouldn't think you'd normally do, right? So I, I didn't think I'd teach. And then I, and I, it turns out that I like teaching, and then I hated mechanics. I grew up in a body shop and doing that stuff, but, boy, that was the thing that just made my blood boil faster <laughs> is working on busted stuff, you know, and nothing goes the way you want it. I still remember at that school, I, 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 we, we did, I started out when there wasn't anything there, just machetes, and we finally got a vehicle, and we got a motorcycle, and weed eaters, and rototiller, and, uh, you know, a truck. And I remember one time I, I was walking out that mile entrance, because everything was broken, and my, my blood was just boiling. I thought, you know, Lord, I don't want to do mechanics, and it was, seemed like that was more that I ever did, more than fly or anything. It was just, just a mechanic. Try to fix yeah, stuff, just maintain fix, it. fix junk, you know, and so <laughs> anyway, but you know, the Lord knows what we need, and, uh, and then I told him, well, okay, uh, we had another big transition. We were there for four years, and now then we went to Santa Cruz, which is a large city, and uh, due to... Um, one of those worst-case scenarios, there's several worst-case scenario people threw out at me. It says, well, what if this happens, and what if that happens, and what will... And I, I hope nobody asks me any more of these worst-case scenarios, because I don't want God to prove what will happen anymore. But uh, one of those worst-case scenarios was uh, our, one of our, our middle daughter, Savannah. She was born premature. Um, Fauna's water broke uh, just before, like three days before school was starting, uh, on a Friday night at 10 o'clock, and she went into labor at, like, was it 25 weeks? I was just t almost 27 weeks. Okay, 27 weeks. And uh, anyway, that was kind of the, one of the harder medivacs I had. We, we flew her out in the middle of the night. 
Um, mm. And you know, it's, it's a little bit different when you're flying your own medical emergency. Yeah. You know? And so, uh, anyway, not to belabor that story too long, we ended up having to stay in, because uh, Santa Cruz, the large city there, because our daughter was in uh, needle, neonatal ICU for over two months. So other people took the school over and, and it turned out that we never went back. I ended up working on a, a, several other projects there in Santa Cruz, one of which was building a new media center for David and uh, for Gospel Ministries, and then um, starting a new air base there as well. And so um, we, we spent another, I don't know, was it close to almost four years there in Santa Cruz? Hard to Three imagine. And a half years. Yeah. And uh, as we were there, we, we really realized the need um, for a program to train missionaries. You know, people are everything. We can, I had so many offers, schools that are empty, places that want to, you know, we yes. need us there. And I think, man, I just need to, and, and young people ask me, well, where do I go to get this training? And where can I go here and that? And, and uh, there's, there's good options, but not really. They're, they take a long time, and, and, uh, or, or they're not really necessarily mission-focused. Mm -hmm. and and they cost a lot of money. Sometimes yeah. they cost a lot of money, and we need Latin Americans. I've been working, I started working on recruiting a, a, uh, more Latin Americans to go to, our, go to our schools. It means that they're Spanish-speaking. Right, you it know, works can, better. Yeah, it does. You gotta have, it takes the dependence uh, off the foreigners. Uh, yeah, too. absolutely. So, um, you know, training them. Uh, that's become a, a greater passion that we've had. I'm trying to remember what the, oh, there's our, our kids. I, I know I've got a, uh, a picture here of the program that we're getting ready to start. So we became, and, and we got into a, uh, we're in kind of a transition period. It kind of reminds me of a little story. I want to read, read a, that, let's read a verse. Uh, it's in uh, Matthew 19:29. And everyone that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. Okay, you can see, we started out, we started out with just a couple of us, Fawn and I, and it was pretty easy when it was just us. I can tell you stories of, you know, sleeping out in the bush, or riding motorcycles for hours, and then, you know, <laughs> staying in some strange place, and... And uh, we still do a little bit of that, but it gets more complicated, each one of these kids that we add here, and they're a big blessing to our family. It's been, right. a, been a huge blessing, but it seems like uh, we haven't had a chance to really stabilize when we it were changes, in Bolivia. changes yeah. your ministry. Yeah, well, when we were in, in, in the school in Guada, you saw that first picture of the hut that we lived in, and then I built an extension on the back to expand for the family, and I finally got the sink in, and it had a toilet and a shower in it, and it had a nice floor. It, it, was, uh, it was a nice place, and we lived in that for how long? About four months. Yeah, four about months. four months. Yep. And God uh, said, you're getting too yeah, comfortable. Yeah, but I had I, the sink for about three weeks, and I was yeah. so excited to wash dishes in my own house. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, so, I know. It's my fault. I should have got it done sooner. But anyway, so then... Well, next time you will, won't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, who knows? But anyway, so then, so then uh, we, we, um, we get to Santa Cruz. We rent an apartment. We stay there for a little bit, and then we move to another rented house, and then... Uh, finally, we actually build a house out here on the, a new uh, facility grounds, the land that we had for uh, Red Advenir, the media the center. Media center. Okay. Uh huh. And on the back, there's the aviation base. So uh, we built a pilot house, and I don't know how long it. I don't remember. It probably took me a better part of about four Got months, it. five months to get it built, and then I think how long do we live there? Four months. About four <laughs> months. And uh, now we're in another transition um, to. To Belize, a new, a new place, area. and uh, so finally, when we kind of get things finally settled in, God says, "Well, no, no, you're too you're, comfortable. You're too comfortable, <laughs> and you got to move." So, anyway, we're uh, we're getting ready to start over again. And okay. I remember that verse that says, "He has not left houses or lands." And sometimes you long to plant and you know eat of that or, or build and inhabit that, inhabitate. I don't know if I'm even Inhabit. Saying, inhabit. inhabit. There That's you go. I'm thinking word. in Spanish. <laughs> That's uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, but I know that uh, not only in heaven where we're going to have that wonderful place, but here too God is going to bless us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, God keeps giving us a little bit better, uh, better every time we move that four months. So we'll see. Maybe next time... Uh, uh, who knows what we'll end up living in. Something, God has something great in store. He does. And, and so we're looking at this project in Belize, which is um, 
Belize is a bilingual country, so it's, it's Spanish, English, and we're looking for a place that we can train volunteers, Latin American volunteers, um, you know, with, in, 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 in these different areas. We're going to do a, it's going to be an evangelism course okay. that, they, that they take like a Bible worker training, okay. plus vocation. So a vocation could be teaching, it could be health work, health, health evangelism, it could be mechanics, construction, and agriculture. Those are the five areas that we're going to develop that in. And um, I want to be able to bring in skilled educators from the states to be able to teach them. Oh, and plus we're going to teach them English, a little bit of uh, English so that they can communicate with the volunteers from the states as well. Because English right. is an international language that they, you know, any yeah. volunteer should, should really have some concept right, of. Right, so, because you never know. They might find, find somebody that they need to help that yeah. only speaks English, there and then go. they could help them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so... Um, Anyway, and Belize is, is a fairly neutral country. It's fairly close. So that's, that's the object, uh, objective. I've been, we've been looking for property for over a year. Uh, we have a team of people that we've been working with. Um, that young lady on the far right, her name is Kayla Valenzuela, and she's a Latin American from Mexico, and she is an amazing young lady. Uh, she worked with us for four years in Bolivia, and uh, she has caught the vision of volunteer missions because a lot of people say, well, well, how can a Latin American survive as a volunteer? You know, where are they going to get the mm -hmm. funds and do that thing? And the same way an American does. Yeah, absolutely. God. God doesn't change. No. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And she's caught that vision, and oh, God has provided for her needs. And uh, because we want to teach that to those young people, too, the same philosophy. Right. Well, uh, you have to have experienced that. And so um, she is going to be the director of that, of that uh, uh, mission college. Okay. Uh, of that. So... Is she? Uh, I'm there to help build it and get it started and, and work with her on that. There is a uh, the person right there in the middle. His name is Perry Cargus, and uh, what a blessing he has been. You know, people would. He's not a doctor or a dentist. He's a heavy equipment operator, and he okay. has been one of the biggest supporters that we've had in Bolivia. Um, just has a big heart and loves the Lord, and he's moving down to help train young people in mechanics, and he is just yes. so excited Wonderful. about doing that, and has been such a huge, not only financially he's put his, he's put his time in there, he's spent months and months in Bolivia helping us, and, and you know. That's great. Yeah, and just a, you know, it's just a normal person. Anybody can, can be a blessing in God's field if you put your heart in service, and it's been amazing, exciting to see the changes in his life because of the experiences that he's had down there. And that's his son. He's dragging his son into it now, too. <laughs> okay, good. And uh, his son's a welder uh, out of North Dakota. And uh, his son's, you know, praying about what it is that uh, God wants him to do. Should he come down and help or, or what? We need to pray for him and see what the Lord has in mind for him. So right. that's, you know, we, 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 those are just some of the people that, that uh, uh, we're, we're working with. Um, we're needing more people, uh, people and skilled in those, those areas of the vocations and mechanics and and construction and, and health work and education, Bible working, evangelism, you know, that may be willing to come down on short term trips or, or even longer term they trips. They could do, do yeah. one session or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. So we, we were looking for property and. Yeah, know. I think that's where Fauna's verse that she gave us earlier, mm. Philippians 4 19, came mm -hmm. in. You were saying, where, oh gosh, where are we going to live? Where all we gonna... need? Because we've been living with other people for our, the last three and a half months, and you, you get weary. You know, you just want to have a little place that's yours, and yeah. knowing where God's going to provide. And then this last week, Jeff was able to find land in Belize and put um, a down payment of it on it. And I know God's going to provide a place for us to stay down there. We don't know exactly where we're going to stay yet, why we're working on building and everything, but He's going to provide that for us. Yeah. His promises are true. They are Absolutely. true. They and are we've true. never gone without food or a place to stay. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yes. Absolutely. So this is the new property then. Well, yeah. We were looking for about a year and, uh, you know, hunting here and there and dead end trails. Missed and that. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, um, it's funny. She, she, uh, she talks about, you know, when we moved and we're living with other people, we kind of threw everything up in the air because now other people live in our house. In Bolivia. In Bolivia, it's hard to go back and... and right. uh, Kick you, them out. Yeah, you end up kind of... You do get that homeless kind of feeling, and I'm like, Lord, we need a place to get this project off the ground. And anyway, we were really praying, and this trip, we went down for two weeks, and uh, the Lord really blessed us with a, a, a nice piece of land. It's 
It's, it's situated in central Belize. Um, it's got good road access. Lots of the qualities that we needed to really put that school together, and, and I feel like God gave it to us. So we ended up getting it for a real good price. We, we uh, 100 acres for 40,000 U.S. And um, anyway, we were able to pay half of it. And uh, we're, we're working on, uh, I've got a bit of a time crunch to pay the other half, and we're really praying that the Lord will help it, will all that work out. And, yeah. uh, and I know he will. He yeah. provided, and he's, he's... Every time. Absolutely. So it's exciting to see what Not what usually in do. our time. No. But no. it will be at this time. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so, and it's a really neat area. In fact, uh, I, I, we, we got a chance to go Sabbath hiking out uh, about a half an hour away from there, and we were seeing some of these. I don't know. No, that, what is that? Oh, There's, it's moving around. It's a movie. Here. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, it, that's it what, looked like I, a large paw print uh, yeah, of some kind. Yeah, it was a jaguar paw. I don't know. I'll go back to it real quick. Oh, and look at see, that. Yeah, yes. That's a, and we saw several of those tracks out there, which is, is really... Is that the size of a hand? Yeah, actually, yeah, it's a, about the size of a hand. It was, it wow. was very... I, I couldn't... Uh, I don't know. I have another picture somewhere. His with, hand or my hand? Uh, probably, yeah. about the size <laughs> of, probably about the size of Fauna's hand. But um, yeah, it was very... It was really exciting. I thought, well, am I going to see a jaguar out here? We were on the hunt to try and find the ocean, and uh, anyway, we, we got up to about, in swamp water, about above our knees and decided to turn around and go back, but... Uh, try a different trail next yeah, time. Yeah, maybe, di- maybe I got <laughs> lost. I don't know. But uh, anyway, there's a lot of neat wildlife out there, and uh, anyway, so it'll be a, it's, it's going to be a good environment for training young people for mission life, because okay. it's very similar to the, the tropic... Um, Areas of, of South America. Where they're going to be working. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so. it takes them, you know, it's in a, it's in a, still their, their own language. Yeah. And it'll be an affordable situation. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just it, getting there. Mm-hmm. That's right. And, and so, um, and this is just us. We went out and we were doing a little bit of work in some of the local churches there. Okay. Some Sabbath outreach. After. Yeah, working okay. with them, uh, with the young people there. And it's just, there's so much need everywhere. And I'm really excited about trying to focus on training these young people to put more workers, uh, you know, the, the harvest. workers. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have something you'd like to say to our audience, if, if you'd like to? Yeah, um, you know, I don't know if the Lord's put it on your heart and you say, well, you know, well, who am I? How, what could I do for God? And, uh, you know, I'm nobody special. I started out as, well, you know, anyway, I'm not, I'm special to God, but we're all special to God, but I got no... Uh, I'm from a small town in Michigan, a small church. Uh, I don't know real wealthy people, uh, but God is, I know a real wealthy God. And he can use us if we're willing. You know, it, it doesn't, if you have a degree or don't have a degree, uh, it, the question is, is are you willing? Are you willing to be used by God? You know, uh, we need, God, the, war, the harvest is great. There are so many souls lying to hear the good news of Jesus and just waiting for us to tell them. And uh, it doesn't matter your skill or your background. Uh, God can use you if you put yourself to his disposition. And we could use, we need people, you know? And, and maybe, maybe you won't come as a teacher, but you'll come as a student. And that's fine too. Um, and we'll, we, we have, there's so many places. The, the biggest thing, we wanna train these people, these young people and old people or whoever, and then place them. Many I, people. Yeah. yeah. And, and we have the, the opportunities to go serve as well, right? right. You get done there, and you're going to go straight on to, on to the, the mission field, for sure. That's right. what you, if you don't want to go to the mission field, don't come, because that's the condition of coming. And right. So. Yeah, well, my husband likes to say that the physical part, you know, providing the money or providing the tools or providing, you know, whatever, is not hard for God. Mm-hmm. The hard part is the hearts. Absolutely. You know, we see that over and over in the scriptures. That the hard yes. part is the heart. So if we give him our hands and our feet and our whole mm-hmm. heart, mm-hmm. then he'll use us in ways that we can never imagine. You know, yeah, absolutely. you never imagined that you'd be a school teacher and like it. Yeah, you never, you know. Yeah. absolutely. <laughs> so, well, I just want to thank the two of you for coming today and sharing thank your story you. with us. It's such mm-hmm. a blessing, and I wish we had more time me. to get into some of those oh, specific stories. stories. Maybe another time maybe, we can. Maybe some time we I'll can tell you do some that. More of those. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because I know that the Lord has led and and blessed and. Mm-hmm. in so many ways, and um, I just want to thank you again for coming thank and you. sharing thank with you. us today. Mm-hmm. And thank you to our viewers for joining us today for the Mission TV show. May God bless you until we meet again. Mm-hmm.